Bibles to John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. It almost seems like this evening that uh, I, I just want to bring affirmation to what we're already being affirmed of this evening of God working and moving. Praise the Lord. There are times where as a pastor you want to preach the balance of God's Word. And I find myself uh, this evening just being drawn to the Word of God in such a way that um, I want to be a reminder of the work of Christ and what He's done and rehearse it in your ears once again. Many years ago, you may remember me telling you a little story. Uh, the story was about the hen and the rooster that was in the barnyard and they were talking to each other. And the hen said uh, to the rooster, I, I'm tired of crawling up in that perch and laying my eggs in the same old place. You see the highway that goes by here? She said, I just want to go out there and I want to lay an egg in the road. The rooster looked at her and said, well, whatever you do, you better get out there and lay it on the line and get out of the way. And so uh, sometimes that's the way you feel like when you preach. You're just ready to lay God's word on the line and get out of the way and allow God just to, to minister to, to the hearts and lives of, of folks. Amen. John 14. We want to look at verse number 19. Jesus is speaking here. He said, Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. I'm going to be taken back to heaven. I'm going back to glory. He said, But you see, but you see me. What was he saying? He said, uh, You're not done seeing me. Because you're going to see that tripart nature of me in the Holy Ghost. I'm sending my spirit. And uh, you'll see uh, me. All those who are saved will see me. Amen. Uh, in, 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 the, in the person of the Holy Ghost. He said, because I live, you shall live also. He was looking forward to the cross, although it was just days before the cross, Brother Craig. Uh, the Old Testament and all these wonderful folks who was around Jesus and His ministry, they looked forward to the cross. I found it to be a blessing to live in the hour in which we live that we look back to the cross. Amen. We have a complete picture tonight. And so uh, Jesus, He was telling them, hey, you, you, you're, you're going to live because I live. Uh, I'm going to rise from the dead that first day of the week. Amen. Uh, on the Lord's day. And he said, I'm going to change history. I'm going to live. And so the celebration is because I live, you live also. So I, I just want to look at that for a little bit this evening. How do I live because he lives? How do I live because he lives? Uh, one of the great things about Jesus Christ, and, and we've been around the altar this evening, and maybe God was preparing my heart, even as I would leave service, Sister Bev. Amen. Uh, he wanted us to know that He lives, and because He lives, we can experience healing. Uh, I, I, uh, several years ago, uh, there was a uh, Russian thief whose name was Sasha, and he broke into a Russian Orthodox church and uh, as he was breaking into this, if you've ever heard Derek Prince, used to be on in the mornings back home in West Virginia, he told this story. Uh, uh, and uh, his, he said that uh, uh, Sasha fell from the dome of this Russian Orthodox church. And when he did, Sister Jenny, he fell in such a way not to rob it, Sister Jenny, but he laid there with two broken legs. Wow, can you imagine robbing a church? 
and uh, there he falls from the dome, uh, and as he did, he breaks his legs, and he tells that uh, as he was laying there, he is waiting for authorities to come and get him because he knew that there was no escaping. His legs was broke. He wasn't going to get away, and as he laid there, he began to look at the paintings and the pictures all around the church, and he saw the life of Jesus Christ, and he began to notice the life of Jesus Christ, Sister Stacy, and, and notice the of the crucifixion and, and all that artwork that was adored and there in the moments as he laid there uh, the, the spirit of the Holy Ghost came upon him and began to deal with his heart and began to convict him and although he was taken and his legs were treated it was 15 months later before sentencing was and Brother Doug it was in Sasha's life that his life was so completely changed not only was he healed physically but he was was here spiritually and because of the work he began to do for Jesus Christ uh, they didn't give him the sentence, sentencing that he should have had because uh, once he was mixed up on the wrong road and he was stumbling and he was falling and he was hurting but he saw the message that Jesus lives and because Jesus lives Sasha found that he could live his life was completely changed oh thank God for you that comes spiritually and emotionally and physically because Christ lives. Amen. James chapter number 5 verse number 15 says this. It says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick because he lives. Amen. There is healing tonight. Amen. Uh, Sister Elaine, there's healing for your body tonight. Not because the doctors know how to minister a chemotherapy, but because Jesus lives and he's the great physician. Amen. There's healing tonight. Amen. For, for the mind, Sister Rachel, all the way in Colorado, for a lady that I don't know there's healing for her mind tonight amen not because there's a pill to take but because Jesus lives amen there is healing Jesus said that uh, to, with man uh, this may look impossible but with God there is nothing that is impossible but all things are possible amen my wife's mother has tried all types of, of regimes that, that she's been given and told to do for her neuropathy but sister Dodd amen it may look impossible with the doctors but all things I said all things are possible with God Amen. I right, Sister Tina, that lady you work with, amen, she can be healed of love cancer because with God all things are possible. Amen. amen. Because He lives, we live also. Amen. There's nothing that is impossible with God. All things are possible. Amen. Uh, the book of Ma uh, Matthew chapter number 10 verse number 19. The Bible says that if two agree on earth, amen, it will be done for them of the Father which is in heaven. Amen. When we join together in prayer, amen, in His presence and we agree, amen, according to His Word and His will, amen, we agree on earth, amen, but it's done in heaven by the Father because He lives. We live. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight, do you realize Jesus was saying to these men, Amen, I'm only with you a little while. The world only sees me for a little while. But, but you see me. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is at work. Amen. You're not blinded to me. And because I live, ye shall live also. I'm talking about healing. Amen. Isaiah 53 says, He was a wounded for our transgression. Goes on down to say, And by His stripes we are healed. Peter said it this way, By whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. Mark says this, That if we lay hands on the sick, that they shall recover. In the book of Exodus, uh, Moses re reported to us, Amen, by the word and the power of God, that God is the God that healeth thee. Amen. Because He lives... Amen. Amen. We live and we can live life holy. He's the healer. Not only tonight, because He lives, we live. We have healing. But we have hope. We talked about that a lot. 
Amen. But I believe that we can never allow it just to be talked about without really radiating in our minds that He gives hope. Bill Gaither, and you're familiar with this so much, I know. Tonight, let me rehearse this in your ears. It was Bill Gaither, he and his wife, in the late 60s, early 70s, they found themselves expecting another child. We know the Vietnam War, we know what was going on there. And Bill also came down with mononucleosis, or we know as mono. And so he was very tired and weak in his body. Anyone that's ever gone through mono will know that it just zaps you of all your strength and it takes you a little while to get over that. And so here it was that that uh, uh, Bill had mono, the bloody war going on in Southeast Asia, the riots that were happening at home. And, uh, 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 and so Bill said that he was exhausted. And when he found out that they were expecting a baby, him and Gloria said to each other, what will this baby face 10, 15 years from now? No. Oh. Thinking about your children, you love your children, you want your children to exceed even to farther measure than what you have succeeded in life. And so here it was, they were grappling this question when all of a sudden Bill and Gloria realized the power of the resurrection. When we recognize the power of the resurrection, it will give us a hope, amen, a fresh and anew. And he began to write the song, Amen, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen. How sweet to hold a newborn baby. Amen. It's a sweet thing, he wrote. Amen. And we can know that this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Amen. There's a hope that is breathed into us because he he lives. Amen. There is hope. Amen. Tonight I want to tell you something. That if you in your life would begin to take that faith, which is a, 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 a seed of hope, and you would allow that to grow in your life, the Word of God recognizes that little grain of faith, that hope in your life. Amen. The smallest of all seeds. But the Bible says when it is planted, oh, in the garden it becomes the tallest tree. And it's brand it reaches out. In fact, so much so that the bird of the air, they come and they find a lodging place of rest and hope within the branches of that mustard tree. Can I tell you tonight, because He lives, we have hope. Amen. It may seem like the smallest of things. Amen. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ and our hope in Him. But oh, it's planted. It becomes the tallest. It becomes the broadest. It becomes a place where others can find refuge. Hope thou in Christ. David said, why is my soul, why is it disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Amen. He found that in the middle of life, his greatest hope had to be in God. I can't say that I've read a whole lot whether Eli, you said about there in Texas and my, what, what, what a sad situation. And I'm not going to get into the logistics of all of it. Amen. Uh, but I want to say just uh, for us on current events, amen, I, I need to tell you that Hollywood, uh, they, can, they can tweet away, oh, they were praying, what does prayer do? Let me tell you what prayer does. Prayer does a whole lot. Amen. Uh, the situation was because of sin and because of evil. But let me tell you what prayer does. It creates hope. Talk about a hopeless a situation if you don't have Jesus. Amen. But you bring Jesus. Amen. Who is alive into the situation. And now you just breathe hope. Thank God for hope. Do you remember the blind man, Brother Doug? He was blind. He relied on everybody else to guide him around, bring him somewhere with a little pail. He was at the mercy, Brother Walter, of others who would just give a little bit of money. But the Bible says when this blind man heard that Jesus was passing by, all of a sudden something happened in his life, Sister Jenny. You know what I call that, Brother Eli? Amen. That blind man began to get up and he said, Jesus, now Son of David, have mercy on me. You know what happened in his heart? 
There was hope that was breathed to him. Amen. Uh, when Jesus passes by, just like he's done tonight, and he is here in our midst, there is hope. Amen. Amen. There is hope tonight. Amen. So hold on. There is hope. Amen. Jesus is here. Amen. Not only is there hope, but there is holiness. I believe that hope leads right, right into this holiness. In Romans chapter number 4, I can read several verses, and I'm not even sure where to start. Romans chapter number 4, verse number 25, the Bible says, who, delivered, uh, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification or for our holiness, our purity, our sins are washed away. So that you're going to know what I'm talking about. Amen. That's when everything in the past, we were having that conversation, it's forgotten. God says, I don't see it, it's holy. That's when He washes away the sea of forgetfulness. The Word of God says He cast it as far as the east is from the west. There's no more to be remembered. Amen. Holiness. Amen. And what does it do for our life? Because He lives, we now live. Not to ourselves, the Word of God says, but we live to Him. Amen. No longer to our own lust, but we live in the Spirit. It's a life of holiness. The Word of God says being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by whom we have access uh, by faith in, uh, into this grace. Wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we uh, glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation it worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because of the love of God uh, is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Amen. Uh, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He makes us holy. Amen. Uh, the Word of God says, for Scary, uh, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, uh, but yet peradventure for a good man uh, some would even dare to die. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, much more than being justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. Thank God that He puts us in a position of being holy. We no longer have to struggle with past sins. Amen. We no longer have to feel guilty. But we're made holy. And we live life holy. Because He is holy. How do I live? No longer to myself. But I live to Him. Because He lives. I live. Because He lived righteous. I can live righteous. Because He loved, I can love. Amen. I believe this as well. Not only because He lives do we have healing. Not only do we have hope. Not only do we live holy. But we live a life of happiness. You see, Jesus was making a statement to His disciples. He said, wait a second. He said, I know that you're going to struggle. Brother Justin, I'm about to die. And you're going to experience the grief of seeing me die. Sister Bev, you're going to experience the grief of me being gone. But he said, wait a second. I want to remind you because I live. You shall live. Go and tarry and wait in the upper room. Because I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. You know what he was saying? He was saying this. I'm going to turn your grief into joy. Amen. I'm going to cause you to rejoice. And the joy that you have in you, amen, no man is going to be able to take it from you. I'm going to be able to give you incredible joy, amen. And the only way that you're going to ever experience that is because I'm alive and because you're alive in me. Do you know that we carry that same joy in us every day? Amen. Uh, someone was explaining what happiness is uh, and what joy is. You know, God gives us happiness, and I use the word happy so I can have all my H's down through there. Amen. But He gives us joy. You can be happy on Christmas Day, but, but after that you can, you can lose that happiness. But real joy 
is something God gives you. And the world situations can't take it away. Because He lives. I can be happy. Hey Amen. Do you ever talk to someone and they're happy all the time? You think, how can they do that? Because they have the joy of God. Amen. Because He lives. They live. It's not conditional upon circumstances that are around about them, but it's given, given by God. And it's enjoying the presence of God that will continue to be. Amen. Because God, He is it. And I do realize that your position in Christ requires you to be joyous. Amen. It requires you to be happy. Amen. Because He lives. We can live. I'm closing things up. I have two more things I want to talk about. But not only because He lives, we live. We have the hope of heaven. And that our bodies are going to be transformed and glorified after Jesus Christ's own pattern of being resurrected and having a glorified body. One day, we are going to be fitted for eternity. Amen. You know what that means, Brother Doug? That means just as you go and get fitted for your suit or for your uniform, whatever you have, you know, when you're a short fellow like me, you have to get fitted for all your pants, get them hemmed up, and you know, because your legs just, and most people's legs aren't this short, you know, I have to get all fitted up. I know all about that, Sister Doc. But one day, our bodies are going to be fitted up, Sister Beth. Amen. This body of flesh and blood is going to turn to flesh and bone. This body that's, uh, that is mortal is going to turn into immortality. This body that knows corruption is going to put on incorruption. Amen. Because He lives, we shall live. Amen. We live in Him now, but there's coming a day. Amen. I want to tell you that should I be taken away from you, Amen. Should I be welcomed into the arms of Jesus? Know that I've passed from this life on into life. Uh, that this body that is laid down has been fitted for a body. Amen. Uh, that, that is eternal. My spirit has gone away, but one day when Jesus comes back, this body will be resurrected from the grave. Even the old embalming fluid itself won't have an effect upon it, but God's going to bring it to life no longer of blood, but of flesh and blood. And for eternity, I shall be with Jesus. Amen. Because He lives. We have the hope of heaven tonight. Don't be caught up in this world. Amen. Uh, don't be transformed by the things of this world, but be re 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 uh, renewed uh, by, by, by your mind, knowing that one day, this body's going to be in heaven. No more pain. And the last thing that I want to look at is that we have Christ. There's a song that came out a few years ago. There are no orphans. Do you know because He lives, none of us here are orphans. I ran into some folks and they said to me, well, I feel like an orphan. My parents are gone. I don't have anyone. The Bible says in John 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. No one here tonight, you're an orphan. Because, because of the work of Jesus upon the cross. You were once strangers and separated from God. By the blood of Jesus Christ, have been brought back in reconciliation with the Father. And so the Spirit tonight makes it real that you have a Heavenly Father. Listen, I don't care if you're 102 tonight. I don't care if you haven't felt like you've had a daddy since you were two. Maybe your, your situation has left you abandoned. You're not an orphan tonight. You have a Father because of the work of the cross. Amen. What did Jesus say? Yet a little while, the world sees me no more. But you see me. And you shall know that I am in my Father. 
and you and me. We have a The Word of God says that we as believers cry unto a mother walk, Abba Father or Daddy Father. I know I share a lot of stories in my life. Hope I don't bore you, but it's sometimes the best way that I like. Little Brady, Daddy loves when you call me Dad. I love that. You say, Daddy, will you do this for me? Sometimes, Brady, you say, Daddy, will you grab my feet? And Daddy loves to hear that, Daddy. This morning, Bella came running in the sanctuary, and she grabbed hold of me. She started hugging on me. She said, I love you, Dad. I love you, Daddy. It's okay if they call me Dad. They'll probably one day do that. But I love this Daddy right now. There's something special about that. You know what? Our Heavenly Father loves when we say, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I'm complete because of you. Tonight, because of the power of the resurrection, we have a healer. We have hope. Amen. We have hopeness in our life. Amen. We have the hope of heaven. But we have Where we were once strangers, now are we grafted back into the Father. And we have Tonight, do you realize you're standing in Christ? Elaine, when you go in there and they have that room all set up for chemotherapy Wednesday, amen, your daddy goes with you. I know that your daddy's sick and we've been praying for him. And your earthly daddy may not be with you, but you have a daddy is. Amen. D, you know you've moved here away from your family and we're glad that you're here with us. Amen. But your heavenly father, daddy's with you. Amen, Sister Jenny there on North 2nd Street. He's in that little white ranch house, but he's two houses down in your house. Daddy's with you. Amen, Sister Rachel. Your earthly daddy may not be here, but your heavenly daddy is. And he's taking care of your earthly daddy. We're going to see him again. Amen, Brother Eli, you told me before that your daddy died when you were very young. Amen. There's been some water under the bridge. But your heavenly daddy is still with you. Sister Stacy, he's still the healer. Amen. Brother Dennis, he still gives hope. You know, Brother Justin, he's still our happiness and our joy. Because though he go in the way, the world has to see him. The Word of God says. But because I live, you shall live. We have real life tonight. Could we be a little impromptu? My wife hates when I do this to her. Can we just sing in closing? Because of this. Amen. My sister Beth, she would never tell me. She was always agreeable. Can I have you come to the piano and play? Could we stand tonight? And then we felt the presence of God. We prayed to see Him. But do we worship and we pray? Amen. In the closing moments of the service, I want it to be real to you because He lives. I can face tomorrow. I know that we're here at Thanksgiving, coming up on East, uh, to Christmas, and I'm preaching the Easter message. That's all right. We celebrate Easter all year long, every day, because He lives. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Can I? I don't want to make you feel juvenile, but you know we all have those nostalgic moments where we go back to our childhood, especially at the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Could you be nostalgic enough tonight to close your eyes and lift your hands and would you say, "Daddy, I love you. Thank you that because you." Uh, I love tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's worship.